Hey, I'm Shane. Today I'm going to be talking about the Peak Design Travel Tripod. This compact tripod has very unique mechanics and a very novel design. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about all the pros and cons of this tripod. And ultimately, I'm going to provide my opinion on it and hopefully help you decide if it's the right tripod for you. So this video is going to be all about the Peak Design Travel Tripod. There's actually two versions of this tripod, an aluminum version and a carbon fiber version. I have the carbon fiber version, but I'll be talking about both versions in this video and the pros and cons of either. I got my tripod about six months ago now in early January, and I did back the Kickstarter when it was announced about a year ago, and I paid for the tripod myself. Um, so there's no endorsements from Peak Design in this video. You might have seen this tripod actually show up in a few of my earlier videos throughout the year so far and I've been using it pretty much as my kind of take everywhere tripod. So whenever I'm going out for photography or doing video work out in the field, this has been my go-to tripod. So I've used it quite a bit and my opinion comes from just extensive use of it. Before I dive into the actual review of the tripod though, I'm gonna talk about kind of the fundamentals of what Peak Design was going for when they made this tripod, because it is very unique. Essentially what it comes down to can be summarized very easily by Peak Design themselves, which is pro level performance at half the size. And this means pro level stability, weight capacity, and also deployment height, while maintaining the size of essentially a water bottle when it's packed up and they certainly did that. To achieve this, they had to do a lot of kind of redesigns to the original kind of conventional tripod designs. One of the most obvious examples of this is in the tripod legs. Rather than having a traditional round tripod leg, these are kind of like hexagonal triangly shapes that essentially when compacted down, lay flush to the very compact thin center column making the tripod's profile very, very narrow. The legs consist of five extending components that are housed in metal cam clamps that are very easy to extend and compact again and pack away. This makes the travel tripod very easy to just simply pop out and put away and is incredibly versatile when you're out in the field, which is much more easy to use than the conventional kind of turning knobs. This certainly isn't a new design, but Peak Design hit it out of the park with making them rugged and also very small. As I said earlier as well, the legs have an option of being either made of aluminum or carbon fiber. This results in different weights for the tripods, with the aluminum obviously being significantly heavier. However, it also results in slightly better performance in the carbon fiber version of the tripod because carbon fiber has a slightly better dampening effect, which Peak Design says is around 20% more stable, which essentially just means that it's gonna get rid of a lot of the micro shakes that aluminum transfers to the camera body, whereas carbon fiber would dampen those naturally. You might notice also that I have some tape on the outside of my legs, and this is because I find, especially on the carbon fiber version of the tripod, when the legs are slightly wet, it can get a little bit slippery, so it's just an insurance policy for myself that I don't lose grip of the tripod, and it just makes it a little bit easier to use for myself. Talking about having a grip though, I'll move on to the feet. And the feet on this tripod are very good. They're just simple little rubberized feet, and you can swap them out for a little metal feet instead, However, it makes it much more difficult to fit in the included carrying case when you have the metal feet on it. And the small diameter of these feet makes it actually have pretty good traction on sand and ice and snow. So I really don't see a huge benefit in using uh, metal spiked feet on this tripod. So I kept the original little rubberized ones on them. There is also the option of getting an ultra light conversion kit. Because if you thought to yourself, wow, this tripod is way too heavy for my purposes, <laughs> you can make it even lighter. And basically rem it removes all the metal segments and replaces it with just a little plastic insert. I didn't purchase this because quite frankly, I don't see the point. Unless you have an extreme weight limitation, you'd be better off just using a micro tripod like the Pixie Stands or just a Gorilla Pod in that situation because Making this tripod smaller is going to be a huge waste of money because the bulk of the price probably comes from 
the legs themselves. The only real big compromise that this tripod makes is when it comes to the ball head. And in order to get the ball head this compact, Peak Design had to take a few pretty major design choices when making it so compact. Essentially, all the ball head is, is a ball on top of the center column that basically has a point of articulation sitting on top of the ball head rather than underneath it as traditional tripods have. And this is gonna be the make it or break it point for most people with this tripod because it's very compact but has a few cons. But I'll start off with the pros of this design. The most obvious pro in my opinion is that it has a standard arca plate mount on top of it. Peak Design does include their proprietary kind of locking Arca tripod plates, which are compatible with all their other accessories that they have. However, I have just been using my L brackets and already other Arca plates that I own. However, I put their plates on my telephoto lenses and I find they're quite convenient to use. All the locking mechanism is on top of the tripod is a small lever and a sliding locking mechanism. This design is both incredibly secure and incredibly quick to use, which makes this ideal for kind of running gun photography, which this tripod is designed for. The ball head itself has quirks to it. The biggest pros I find of using it is that putting the camera onto it and adjusting it quickly is incredibly easy to do. And with a travel tripod, that's your number one goal. You want it to be quick and easy to use, and this tripod certainly is. The big cons though come to kind of moving it for other applications. So say you want to take a panorama photo, essentially you have to turn the tripod in a way that you keep it perfectly level so that you're not changing all the axes. But if you're using a slightly heavy camera, the tripod head just has a tendency to kind of drift, which makes sense because the ball head has all the weight sitting on top of it. So it's just not ideal for that application. However, it's also pretty rubbish for video work because, because you have to move all the axes at the same time, you kind of get this shaky look to your video, which is not what you want when using a tripod. And the last thing is that if you want to have the tripod sitting on the side, you have to pick what side of the ball head you put the, the camera onto and essentially if you have an angle that you can't look at on the one side you have to turn it all the way to the other side and it is a little inconvenient but this is not as big of an inconvenience because essentially peak design designed it in the way that the majority of angles that you want to take are going to be on the left side of the ball head and those 100 degrees up and down really cover most of your areas that you normally would use. However, if this is a huge drawback to you, I highly recommend just getting an L bracket for your camera because that's going to be better regardless anyways. And ultimately, if you don't like any of the ball head at all and you just hate it with a passion, you do have the option to just replace it with a uh, traditional ball head modifier, which allows you to mount any tripod head to the top of it, which is something I do on occasion. And I find it's incredibly useful for video work if I want to put a fluid head, because I love the legs of this tripod and it's still very lightweight. However, when you modify the top of the tripod, it won't fit in the carrying case, which does limit its portability. In terms of overall capacity though, this tripod boasts a 20 pound weight capacity which is rather impressive and I've put it to the test as best I can by putting on my 200 to 600 millimeter on it routinely as well as using the video rig that I use with my camera in a cage with a monitor which is actually rather quite heavy and besides it being a little bit tipsy-turvy once you lock the tripod into place it is very steady and there is certainly no slipping in the legs or in the center column or even in the tripod head so it does stand up to the weight capacity that it advertises underneath the center column there's actually a small hook which is quite handy because this allows you to increase the amount of stability of the tripod itself by attaching your bag underneath it which is also just very useful for instance if it's a rainy day you can keep your bag off the ground and underneath the hook there's also a little funny hidden compartment which houses a actual mount for your phone so if you want to mount your phone to the tripod which i find is quite a silly concept you can absolutely do so. 
And for instance, say you're out in the field and you're trying to shoot video of yourself. This could be quite useful if you have no other camera on hand and your phone is accessible. However, I would never recommend using a $600 plus tripod for exclusively phone photography because you're gonna get diminishing returns with this tripod and a phone. The last thing is the tripod does come with a very nice carrying case, which I've used pretty much exclusively to carry the tripod around over the last few months that I've been using it. And even after extensive use, I find it fits the tripod very snugly and is a very efficient way to take the tripod around. With all the unique features of this tripod though, it does come in at a pretty steep price. That is $600 US or $825 Canadian, which is a pretty darn steep price. And that's for the carbon fiber tripod. If you want to save a little bit of money, you can spend $350 US for the aluminum version or 500 Canadian, which as I said earlier, is a little bit heavier of a tripod with technically less stability. However, it is perfectly functional for pretty much everything. It's just the carbon fiber version is gonna be a little bit more portable. This is a very high price point, and especially at first glance, this tripod might seem like a terrible value, and you're mainly paying for aesthetics and branding. And this is partially true, especially at the launch of this tripod, it was very kind of overhyped. However, if you actually look at the rest of the market, especially options from say Gitzo, you end up paying for a very similar price if you're gonna get a carbon fiber tripod at this size with this performance. And really what you're paying for with this tripod is the cam clamps and the unique tripod head that makes it much easier to use. And it's a whole lot more portable and quick to actually set up than other tripods in the same price point. So you're paying for a very unique design and it actually isn't the worst value ever. Peak Design also offers a free lifetime warranty with this tripod, which is pretty awesome. And I've had to use their customer service in the past to have a replacement for a backpack of mine that zipper broke. And I found going through their customer service very easy and I had a really easy go of it. So I'm quite confident that if I did have an issue with this tripod, getting replacement parts wouldn't be the end of the world. So overall, I really enjoy using this tripod though I do have a bit of difficulty recommending it because at this price point, you want it to be good for everything, but it just isn't gonna be perfect for everyone because if you're doing a lot of video work or a lot of panorama work, you might benefit from a different tripod with a different ball head that's gonna be more integrated into the design or just forego using a ball head altogether because realistically for video and panoramas, it's not gonna be the best thing ever. However, for a lightweight travel tripod, this tripod is very rugged and Peak Design made a lot of really unique, good design choices in their design. And I think they did things right more than they did wrong with it. And I certainly see myself using this tripod for many years into the future. Well, that's it for the video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it useful. If you did, please maybe consider liking the video and subscribing. It helps me grow the channel and make more videos like this in the future. If you have any questions or comments or insight that I missed on the tripod, please feel free to leave a comment below. I try and answer all the comments still, so I'd love to talk to you. Anyways, I hope you have an awesome day and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.